making plans for night you This boy is electric Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy related video. It's uh, beginning of December now, so time to update you how we got on in November. And this is a very odd one to start. When is a power cut? Not a power cut. Very odd chart this with the house voltage dropping down to 190, 180 volts. Not sure what was going on here. I only noticed this while looking through the data for doing this end of month update. I had not noticed a power cut in the house. So on the 17th of November, 10.30 a.m., something happened. Voltage dropped. The frequency of an electric power, the AC power in the house, dropped according to our Victron inverter. The way we normally tell that there's a power cut is the Victron inverter will send us an email to say that there was a power cut and the battery took over. The Solace inverters also, they go offline and they send us emails to say that there's a grid connection lost. And that did not happen, so it doesn't look like the battery took over. It doesn't look like we had an actual power cut. Yet looking here at the solar PV for that time at 10.30, big, big drop down from 5, 6 kilowatts down to under 1 kilowatt. So something was going on. Power did drop from the solar side for some reason. Voltage dropped, frequency dropped. But was it so fast that it didn't cause us a problem? I just don't know what went on, really. But uh, you've got to say, you know, you're happy that the house carries on and you don't know us. But what was that in the data? An odd one, that's for sure. But resuming normal service, solar production, 342.55 kilowatt hours for the month of November. Oh, I think that's quite all right. I'm quite happy with 340 kilowatt hours in a winterish month. And one, two, three, four, month, uh, four days of the month there where we had 25 kilowatt hours in a day. That's a load of energy and a few more near 20. A few days, though, you know, on the 10th, what's that, the 14th, 15th, you know, almost nothing. And three more days towards the end of November with uh, under five kilowatt hours. So a good mixture, but a normal looking November, I think. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. The stats don't lie, though, and this November was actually a bang average month. Looking at the uh, B column there of this spreadsheet, 3.9 kilowatt solace array, we did 157 kilowatt hours for the month. And 157 is spot on bang average. Uh, looking at it just graphically, yeah, uh, 157 for that main array was average. 89 was average as well. It's only that we had the garden solar array that brought it up to a very healthy 342. More great solar stats. The number of kilowatt hours we generated per solar array, the different breakdowns that we've got here, uh, per kilowatt of solar panels installed. So it's a good reference point for comparing to other things. So looking here in November, our main solar array, 40.26 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels installed. We've got 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels installed. Looking back across the year, going up that column, um, the lowest was January at 42. So November, yep, low, low generation compared to January, February, and every other month of the year so far. So it is the lowest so far. Sadly, December is going to go even lower, I think. 15.52 um, was our lowest number, and that's the mix of the garage solar panels and the east-facing gable. Solar Edge Array looked more respectable at 37 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels installed. And finally, our Garden Solar Array, south facing in the garden with a load of shade, just 20 kilowatt hours. So half of what we're generating pro rata of the main south facing array on the roof. Here's a few charts I don't normally share with you for this, but it really emphasizes the difference with this winter solar generation, how much less we're getting. So here's an example of the end of solar where we had a perfect solar day, blue skies, and yet we peaked at just over 5 kilowatts, 5,000 watts around the lunchtime period there. Now, previously in the summer period, we'll be peaking at 10 kilowatts. So the peak is massively down. So looking deeper into the peak energy for our solar arrays, this is all of our solar all together in the blue line here. Start of the month, we're peaking nearly 8 kilowatts. End of the month, we're peaking at 5, 5.5, 5.6 kilowatts. So that really shows you how shade and the darkness and the low angle of the sun is now affecting the peak level we're getting out of our solar arrays. Looking at our main solar array, the 3.9 kilowatts on the south-facing roof, uh, we're peaking towards the end of the month at only 2.5 kilowatts. So normally that peak and 
max out the inverter at 3.6 or a whole kilowatt down on peak power. The garage solar array, that's just three panels, 1.1 kilowatts south facing on the garage roof. We're only maxing at 700 watts on that one. So that's, again, you know, a huge reduction on what we normally see. But south facing, it's still not so bad. Our worst affected solar array is the east-facing gable panels. So that's about 1.8 kilowatts of solar panels. That's four 455-watt panels, 90 degrees on the wall, east-facing. But the sun's not rising in the east anymore. It's rising much further round, more on the south side. And you know, those panels just aren't getting any sunlight, and it's really dull first thing in the morning anyway. So we're peaking now at 300 watts instead of 1.8 kilowatts. So yeah, it's a massive, massive impact on those east-facing gable panels. But I accept that. I accept that they perform well in spring and summer. They don't in winter. Our 2.4 kilowatts of garden solar panels, they're south-facing but ground-mounted with loads of shade right now, peaking at just 800 watts. It's so sad to see 800 watts from a 2.4 kilowatt array. And the last solar array that we have, Solar Edge, south facing on the main roof, 2.4 kilowatts with a 2 kilowatt inverter. That's not doing too bad, is it? 1.4 kilowatts instead of 2 as a peak? That's not so bad. Which leaves us with this breakdown, you know, 157 kilowatt hours for the main solar array, the 3.68 kilowatt solids inverter, just 88, 89 kilowatt hours for the solar edge. The garden solar array, yeah, only 49 kilowatt hours, but it's 49 extra if I hadn't installed that array. And the gable panels uh, and the garage panels combined, uh, that was just 45 kilowatt hours. And very quickly, this is the daily breakdown for the main Solus array that we have, the 3.9 kilowatt array. And again, the daily breakdown this time for the 2.5 kilowatt Solus inverter for the gable panels and the garage roof. And finally, this is the daily breakdown for the garden solar panels. And Solar Edge, I hear you say, no, Solar Edge doesn't give me that data anymore. My charts will not show me daily solar because we have all these extra arrays that Solar Edge can't see. We're not just Solar Edge. Their app doesn't work anymore for us. But this chart is handy from the Victron Inverter. It shows what did we do with that solar energy. 279 kilowatt hours we put out to the grid, 5.7 kilowatt hours we put into the battery and direct use, self-consumption, 73 kilowatt hours. More solar stats than normal this month. I'm loving it. I love the comparison, looking at different charts and different ways of seeing it to fully understand what's going on with solar. What are the numbers and why are the numbers and how do they compare? Anyway, this is the annual view of our solar production, 10.7 megawatt hours so far this year. <laughs> yeah, did I really say that? 10.7 megawatt hours. But look at January and February and how low they are in the 300 kilowatt hour range. The same as November. That's not normal. February is normally better than that. So we had a poor february but then it absolutely just took off and we've had a great solar year overall all of our energy use then for the year so far for 2025 10.7 megawatt hours solar generation 10.4 megawatt hours exported to the grid 6.8 megawatt hours brought in from the grid so that's our cheap rate import that's virtually all at seven pence a kilowatt hour and seven megawatt hours is our consumption in the home so far pretty good going just december to go to see what the final numbers are the amazing thing for us in november this year though is we actually have a credit bill in november i've never had that before we've always had a net bill to pay between what we export and what we get paid for the export versus what we're bringing in from the grid and what we're paying for this time we're 15 pounds in credit we spent 65 pounds on bringing energy in 913 kilowatt hours and we generated a, a credit of 81 pounds for the 544 kilowatt hours that we exported year to date that's 492 pounds we've spent importing energy from the grid 1562 credit for export giving us 1069 pounds credit so far for the year Battery then, our Pylon Tech batteries. We've got 30 kilowatt hours of Pylon Tech batteries connected to our Victron MultiPlus 5000. And we've been charging it up to 100% on most days. Some days we don't quite have enough hours at cheap rate to charge it up to 100%. But, you know, it doesn't really matter. We still get to export a lot of energy, mostly down to about 40%. Uh, that's roughly where I normally export down to. But a few days there, down to 30 and 20%. The problem with going so much lower like that is then hard to recharge it because we're only charging the battery at 3.6 
kilowatts. So five and a half hours at 3.6 kilowatt hours. You know, I can only normally get 18 kilowatt hours into the battery. So if I charge it, discharge the battery down too much from the 30 kilowatt hour battery, I can't put 30 kilowatt hours back into the battery. There's not enough cheap rate energy to do it. So it's quite hard. So yeah, only a few days there where we've discharged down to 30 and 20%. So yes, I need to upgrade our Victron inverter to a bigger inverter that can charge up faster, I guess. Or, you know, have I just installed too much battery or have I been smart and I've planned for contingency so some of that battery can and will be in the future charged up from solar energy? So all the energy we imported from the grid and we produced on solar, what did we do with it? 167 kilowatt hours went into the Zappi to charge our electric car. Toshiba air conditioning for the month of November, wasn't that cold? 104 kilowatt hours. That's really not a lot of energy, is it? 67 kilowatt hours was our kitchen sockets, the cooker, the washing machine, etc. The eddy for our hot water, just 52 kilowatt hours for hot water for the entire month. And a little bit of solar is included in that 12 kilowatt hours of solar power powering our hot water. The television and our sound bar and media player, that was 19.8 kilowatt hours. The main induction hob for cooking, 16 kilowatt hours. The internet routers, 13 kilowatt hours. The ensuite radiator towel rail, 9 kilowatt hours. Mixer G, that's our hot water tank. We did a cleanse, 9.4 kilowatt hours. Laundry, dehumidifying, drying all of our laundry, that was 6 kilowatt hours. The cloakroom infrared mirror that we have in there, that's just one kilowatt hour dehumidifier. It's actually been quite good. Humidity in the house has been really good this year. Just one kilowatt hour. The cloakroom towel rail, 0.72 of a kilowatt hour. You can start to tell we're not using a lot of heat for heating, really. But it's just getting started, isn't it? It's November. December, I guess we're going to use a lot more. So overall, we've had a half decent month, haven't we? I know it's not anything like spring and summer, but for November, decent amount of solar coming in. It hasn't been that cold. We haven't used a huge amount of energy on heating, so the house consumption has been pretty good. And we've managed to export a lot of solar energy and a lot of battery energy as well. And that's kept us in credit for the month of November. First time ever, a credit on our energy bill in November. So I think we've done really well. We've had a good month. It hasn't been as bad as it could be. I wonder what December is going to be like. Colder, harsher, windier maybe, less solar, definitely. We'll see, won't we? Anyway, join me for more videos, lots more coming. Hope you've had a good solar month. And uh, yeah, you're not too cold and too miserable. I hope all this great day, a great solar keeps you happy. See you again soon. Bye for now.